Hello, this is a Climate Emergency Institute video. This is on the IPCC's sixth assessment scenarios, and in particular, the best case climate change mitigation scenarios. And uh, they are designed to limit the degree of global climate change to 1.5 degrees C or and 2 degrees C. And those limits are only by 2100. Uh, so another title for this video would be the 2022 climate science imperative of immediate emissions decline. So this shows those two best case scenarios and uh, they illustrate the 2022 climate science imperative of immediate emissions decline which comes through over and over in the IPCC Sixth Assessment Working Group 3 Mitigation Report to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees C and to 2 degrees C this century emissions were required to be declining from 2020. So the um, image here is a simplified image from uh, Working Group 3 the Mitigation Report and it shows the best case scenario which is called S SBM 1-1.9 don't worry about the terms this one is projected to uh, reach 1.4 degrees C by 2100 with a 50 percent chance of that and the next best one is projected to limit the temperature increase by 2100 to 1.8 degrees C and a 67 percent chance of that. So we have these two uh, projected under 1.5 degrees C and under 2 degrees C. Now they both require CO2 removal or negative emissions and uh, that is supposed to start happening after 2050. So as you can see in both these scenarios they go into decline 2020. Uh, this means that uh, of the many scenarios in the sixth assessment there's only one to know and that's the best case 1.4 degrees C by 2100 and remember that assumes successful CO2 removal that's negative emissions after 2050. The reason why that's the only one to know is that uh, 1.5 degrees C is globally disastrous that was very clear from the 2018 IPCC 1.5 degrees C report and this also clearly shows and we had known this for many 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 years that 2 degrees C would be uh, globally catastrophic and catastrophic to the planet so you'll have noticed that there is a range given of the emissions projections. I'll just flip back here. So you can see there's a range here and a range here. And this is what the uh, computer models give us. They give us quite wide ranges of what they project is going to happen in the future. Uh, to go back to this image, so what the IPCC does with the ranges is it just takes the median there. So when you see um, published projections, no matter what aspect of climate change they're on, they all have this similar large range of computer model projections because that's the nature of computer models. And the IPCC, the number that it gives or the line on the graph that it gives is the median. So this top one here, I've just chosen because it shows these ranges. Interestingly, the intention of this was to show what would happen with no climate policies, with uh, current policies, and with uh, so-called pledges. Now you'll see that the range, bigger upper range and the bigger lower range, increases over time and increases with the projected increase in emissions. So that gives the picture and uh, this one here is actually from the uh, Working Group 3 report and uh, this shows big ranges of these two scenarios here which as I say we don't need to worry about and they show uh, 
pretty large ranges for the best case scenarios uh, 1.9 and 2.6, 1.9 being under 1.5 degrees C and 2.6 being under 2 degrees C. So now I'm showing you a chart of the uh, emissions scenarios. The temperature increase that they're projected to reach by 2100. And in this I'm going to include the range. I'm only including the upper range. Uh, that's the one we really need to know. And the lower range of these scenarios is really virtually impossible. The upper ranges are not impossible. There are really are no factors that are going to drive down the projections. But there are certainly factors that may drive up the projections of more emissions. So there's the original image of um, this table. And these are the scenarios here. And here's the best case one, and there's that next best case one. And I'll just lead you to read across. So the best case one, as we saw, is projected to reach a median of 1.4 degrees C, but the upper range goes up to 1.8 degrees C. And the next best one, which reaches 1.8 degrees C by 2100, the upper range is up to 2.4 degrees C. Now, um, it's important to remember that these projections of these two best case scenarios uh, depend on the assumption of successive, depend on the assumption of successful removal and safe storage of CO2 from the atmosphere. That's carbon capture, carbon capture and sequestration or carbon capture storage, CCS. And that is one huge assumption. So here's a working group three uh, projections of all of the scenarios. Um, there's the best case for under 1.5. There's the next best case for under 2. Um, this odd scenario, which suddenly starts going down, um, this is the um, sort of middle of the scenarios. And then there's a uh, scenario here, um, which is the uh, next to worst case. And then there's this very, very uh, worst case scenario up here. Uh, finally, I want to point out uh, this projection. I've added this, and I've added it with the data from the IPCC Working Group 3, uh, the report that says on current policies, the world is headed for a temperature increase of 3.2 degrees C by 2100. And I, I think this is pretty well known um, uh, over several years that uh, the absence of climate policies, uh, the refusal of uh, world powers, big economy, world governments to do anything but continue to push more fossil fuels, will is sending us to at least 3.2 degrees C, 2100, and that is certainly an end of the world temperature, and it continues to increase after 2100. So um, th this really is an important number to know, that our governments, our corporations, fossil fuel corporations, investment banking corporations, have us condemned to a catastrophic 3 plus degree C temperature increase by 2100, which means that way before 2100, um, and in actual fact by 2050, they have us condemned to a globally catastrophic 2 degrees C plus world. The numbers, by the way, 8.5, 7, 4.5, 2.6, and 1.9, they just um, numerical expressions of the heat that has been added to the climate system by 2100. Um, the temperatures that I'm giving here, uh, they are all from pre-industrial, or from 1850 to 1900 in degrees centigrade. Uh, so there's some details here that I've uh, put down. These are very, really fundamental details, and here's the reference. So, as I mentioned, the temperature increases of this century, they do not go beyond 2100, whereas global warming lasts over a thousand years. 
The two sub 2 degree C scenarios have global emissions in decline from 2020. They both assume fossil fuel phase out of all fossil fuels and coal by 2040. They rely on assumed successful CO2 removal. In the projections this is after 2050. Without successful removal they will both exceed 2 degrees C by 2100 and after 2100 they'll both continue to increase, albeit slower. This middle scenario SSP 4.5 assumes that the economy will become more efficient with more renewables. It's not a realistic scenario. The scenarios above 3 degrees C by 2100 will definitely keep increasing after 2100. Now all the scenarios assume continued economic growth, even the best case. Though the best cases do assume the world will mix in quality of life based GDP in with our current environmentally perverse GDP. Carbon pricing is assumed in the best case scenario of around $20 per metric ton of carbon. Now methane emissions have to decline as well and they also had to be in decline from 2020. The methane um, emissions I just included in a small version next to the uh, all-important CO2. But methane is absolutely, um, but it's absolutely essential that methane emissions are put into decline as well as CO2. And this was stressed for the very first time in the sixth assessment. The land and ocean carbon sinks are assumed to keep increasing. So in all these scenarios it's assumed that the uh, land and the ocean will continue removing a large percentage of our carbon emissions. However, the land carbon sink is already started to uh, decline in efficiency. The large sources of amplifying feedbacks are not included in these projections, which add more emissions, and they're not included even in the upper ranges. The adverse ocean effects on the climate system are not considered. Um, th this is a huge fundamental flaw, that all the calculations uh, and uh, mitigations, projections for global temperature increase, impacts, uh, radiative forcing, all of these projections that were given do not include any consideration of the oceans. But of course the oceans, this is planet ocean, the ocean is uh, by way, way the largest system of the climate system and the oceans ultimately determine climate and climate change. Now they're all, best, they're all based on one single sensitivity metric which is 3 degrees C for a doubling of atmospheric carbon dioxide. So whereas the climate will become more sensitive to emissions and global warming, this is inevitable. Um, the IPCC excludes this fact. Everything, no matter how long, no matter how high, they're all based on a one single climate sensitive one single climate sensitivity metric and that metric is a linear one. Projections do not consider non-linear abrupt changes although we have known for many years that the climate system when under climate change is characterized by non-linear changes. We know that from the past. The two best case scenarios assume government action but there are no specified policies in these scenarios. Even in the two best case very stringent mitigation pathways, sizable remaining methane and nitrous oxide emissions are projected by all models and in 2100. And there's a lot of the emissions left, um, uh, 53 to 85 percent for methane and 59 to 95 percent of nitrous oxide. So even in the best case scenarios by 2100 there's a very sizable amount 
of methane and nitrous oxides remaining in the atmosphere and they're both very powerful uh, greenhouse gases so I've included some more details um, from that same reference paper here and um, I'll uh, just leave you to read those over and of course I'm finishing up again with the uh, IPCC assessment projections for emissions, global emissions of greenhouse gases. I should have mentioned uh, that this figure here from Working Group 3 is for global greenhouse gas emissions. <coughs> All of the greenhouse gases, not just CO2 alone. That's expressed in CO2 equivalent and parts per million of air. So, most important thing to bear in mind then is that these two best case scenarios assume successful removal of a substantial amount of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and storing it away somewhere safely. If we put these into decline immediately, and we have to do that, if we do that, um, we still have to develop a capacity for successful CO2 removal for us to uh, achieve below 1.5 degrees C or here below 1 point and here below 2 degrees C. Uh, but 1.8 degrees C um, is a unlivable future. So the only livable scenario that there is is an under 1.5 degrees C scenario. Even 1.5 degrees C, and this is very obvious from the 2018 IPCC 1.5 C uh, report, results in a globally disastrous planet. Now these changes that we're implementing, or that um, the world economy, the world fossil fuel economy is implementing, these are irreversible. There's no going back on uh, the changes, the temperature increases and the climate changes that these even best case scenarios result in. And also bear in mind uh, that these are, they, they look as though they're definite, um, but they're far from definite. A 67% chance and the all important only a 50% chance for under 1.5 degrees C by 2100. So I stress the CO2 removal again because we're now 2022 and that means we have to remove even more carbon dioxide and with every single year that mitigation putting global emissions into decline is delayed that means more and more CO2 would be required to be removed from the atmosphere. But furthermore, it means that it's more and more likely that it will be completely impossible to remove enough CO2 to stabilize below 1.5 degrees C or indeed to stabilize under 2 degrees C. So uh, this is a disastrous to catastrophic legacy that right now the world economy, the world is leaving unavoidably, inevitably for the world's children today and all future generations. There is absolutely no reason and we have known this for years and years and years no reason that we can't put global emissions into decline and the working group three calls for rapid decline on an immediate basis. We have all the technologies and everyone must know that we have all these uh, great amazing renewable energy technologies and they're getting better and better with more and more development. And uh, so why are we now inviting a uh, climate catastrophe to the future of humanity? 
Well, there's only one reason, and that is the world economy. The world economy is fundamentally an environmentally perverse economy. It does not include in the economics the economic costs of the socio-environmental impacts of economic growth. And I mentioned that even these best case scenarios assume continued economic growth. And uh, that means that actually, uh, actually, if we uh, reform, redesign the uh, planet killing economics, um, that makes it more likely that we're going to limit to 1.5 degrees C. So why is the world economy why is the world economy doing this? Well, it's mainly because it's owned and run, as I think everybody knows, by the big global banking corporations. And those corporations only have one intention, and to pursue that intention, all other factors are removed, they're blind to all other factors apart from the continued economic growth of monetary profit. So that's the fundamental reason. And for decades, uh, books and papers and articles, countless, have been published uh, pointing out that this has to lead to disaster and the economics has to be reformed to uh, ecological or environmental or ethical economics. And we have plenty of good uh, models all worked up for that. And the other reason, which is absolutely terribly incredible, is to this day in 2022, world governments are subsidizing the fossil fuel industry. Um, I'm making this uh, video in June of 2022. In the first quarter of this year, the fossil fuel corporations have made more monetary profit than at any other time in their history. Uh, my final comment has to be on the 1.5 degree C limit, which everybody is agreed is the only safe limit, and that is relative safety, because I've said 1.5 degree C is definitely a globally disastrous world, a globally disastrous planet. Now, we know that for sure, because the Sixth Assessment Working Group 2 um, told us that all of the extreme weather events are increasing, and they are all increasing, being driven by global climate change, being driven by industrial, mainly fossil fuel, or greenhouse gas emissions. 1.5 degrees C now is impossible. You will no doubt have heard from all sources that we still have this supposed uh, rapidly closing window to achieve 1.5 degrees C. We cannot achieve 1.5 degrees C. It's 2022, and in 2018, the one IPCC uh, told us, uh, showed us in great detail, the global emissions had to be in decline by 2020. We will be at 1.5 degrees C around 2030. Now, the, uh, t it's terrible that this reality, the scientific reality, is being denied by practically everyone, except, of course, um, the one leading scientist, James Hansen, who has published that we cannot limit to 1.5 degrees C, and the idea that we can is BS. It's nonsense, in other words. And, he said, we're going to be very, very hard-pressed 
to limit to 2 degrees C. I want to point out uh, this projection. I've added this and I've added it with the data from the IPCC Working Group 3, the report that says on current policies the world is headed for a temperature increase of 3.2 degrees C by 2100. And I, I think this is pretty well known over several years that the absence of climate policies, uh, the refusal of uh, world powers, big economy, world governments to do anything but continue to push more fossil fuels is sending us to at least 3.2 degrees C, 2100, and that is certainly an end of the world temperature, and it continues to increase after 2100. So um, th this really is an important number to know, that our governments, our corporations, fossil fuel corporations, investment banking corporations, have us condemned to a catastrophic, three plus degrees C temperature increase by 2100 which means that way before 2100 um, and in actual fact by 2050 they have us condemned to a globally catastrophic two degrees C plus world.